You're listening to She's the Business Podcast. Okay, and I'm here with Jen Donovan. Um, Jen, welcome back to the podcast. Um, You actually, it was episode 75. You joined me on She's the Business previously. Um, I don't know if you can recall, we had a really great conversation about why four out of five businesses fail and how to avoid putting yourself into that awful statistic so what you can kind of really do to future proof your business and it was a great episode so welcome welcome back thank you very excited to come back um it was a great episode and i don't know if the statistic has changed a lot it's still uh quite high but um yeah Mm. no it was a good conversation and another good one coming up hopefully Yes. Well, today I'm actually really excited to talk about this because I don't think we've had a budgeting um, discussion on the podcast yet. But obviously, (laughs) you and I both being marketers, um, you know, running marketing teams and things back in the days where we worked for other organizations, you know, the budget is a really key part of, well, what are you going to do? Where are you going to put your money to? Um, So we're going to chat all about how you think outside the box. Um, you know where you should be spending your energy and your dollars um, because you know yeah you want to be putting it in places where it's worth more but before we get into that because I know we (laughs) could just start off on that tangent um, please (laughs) for those who are new to the podcast please um, tell us what it is that you do in your business who you help um, give us that little intro please Jen. Thank you. It's always really hard, isn't it, to introduce yourself and tell people what it is that you do. So I basically, I'm a marketing consultant for small business owners. I do have a bit of a rural regional flair because I live in a rural area. So I kind of, I do have clients from cities and things like that but I do have a bit of a passion and a bit of love for helping rural and regional small businesses but I guess my whole business is built on the one goal the one principle to help small business owners make marketing a priority that's all I want to do I want them to make marketing a priority not a sometimes activity not a when I get time activity but actually make time for your marketing and basically grow the business that you want to grow I I think it's really hard to grow a business without doing any marketing and I always get a little bit um, of that you know the hair that stands up on the back of my neck when I read comments like oh but I've never done marketing and I've grown my business blah 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 and I think to myself that's really good but imagine all that money you've left on the table because you didn't do any marketing imagine what your business could look like if you actually yeah. put some energy into marketing plus I don't really believe that they didn't do any marketing no, I was just <laughs> they may not realize that they've been doing it um but they are doing it right like and I think that that's the whole thing it's so integral to a business like you can't actually have a business that is a real business and not a hobby if you're not doing some form of marketing because that's how your clients find you you know Mm -hmm. and you and I you know obviously we totally believe in it because it's our background but I find it really strange of someone to think that they could run a business and have no consideration of marketing at all because you can't, if you're focusing just on your product or your service, that's wonderful. But how are you connecting it with anyone? How are people finding you? Like anything that you're doing that's allowing people to find you is, in fact, marketing. Um, yeah. You know, even yeah. whatever you're putting out there, naming it, the the actual way that you put your service offering together and packaged it that is all part of the marketing it's marketing is not posting on social media you know and if that's what they're thinking (laughs) and then I reckon that's where the thought comes from because for Mm. me I guess you know I have uh, you know marketing is everything marketing is the way you pick up the phone marketing is the way you answer that email marketing you know if you live in a rural community or you live in a small community marketing is the way you show up in the shopping center or or at the supermarket like you you're (laughs) always wearing that brand Mm -hmm. hat that's one of the bad things about being a small business owner is sometimes you can't take that hat off um so marketing is everything like if you give really bad customer service yes it's customer service but it's also marketing no one's going to come back to you if you gave them really rotten service or over promised and under delivered and all of those things so Mm. yeah I don't quite believe they didn't do any marketing but I still do have that thing of imagine what would happen if you made marketing a priority and grew your business using you know 
well-founded marketing strategies. It's just like you could have a business that you've probably dreamt of. But yeah. yes. Oh, uh, you know, like <laughs> we're so much with this because I think last night I woke up at some point in those dreamy moments and um, I've just had a lot of people recently who have, been cold DMing me and like quite a lot of you know no they don't just send one or you know it's not just the fishing like hey I've got a question to ask you it's like well what is the question you know clearly you're wanting me to respond that means that you actually want to ask a question about my business so that you can sell to me um but they they're like sending four or five and and like going you know when can we jump on the call to discuss this and I'm like whoa (laughs) dude I haven't even responded at all like you are just messaging an inbox right now and it's like they're going straight for the sales and what makes me just sit up and go come on wake up like take the blinkers off please you cannot go from stranger to client and skip the entire marketing journey like there is a reason why marketing exists you cannot just go straight to a sale and expect that to be a successful strategy because I am not interested in you. Like, I have no idea who you are. You popped into my inbox. I don't have, I don't know who you are. I've never heard of you before. I haven't actually said that I've got a problem that I need you to solve. You have it. Like, there is zero. There is no conversation at that point. And I get really passionate about this. And I've been trying really hard to be just to give them a little bit of compassion and think, well, they're just trying to run a business. And, you know, they don't necessarily know what I know. So, don't get frustrated, try to help them out. And every now and then I try to give them a bit of advice back and say, hey, you know, this might not be the best way to get clients because of all these reasons. But this is why marketing is so important because, you know, I click on one or two of them just to see, you know, okay, well, who is this person and what are they? Mm -hmm. And they've got nothing happening. There's like a social media profile with zero. I'm like, so you've done nothing and you're out there into people's inboxes you've come to my account trying to tell me that you can help me with my business and I look at you and I'm like eh, I can't even see anything like who do you think you are and it's not saying that I think I am someone I'm just like you just do not get the point of what marketing is all about you know there's a million strangers out there you want a stranger to get into that place where they're becoming a, a lead or a client like marketing is how that happens it's how they mm-hmm. discover you how they get, start to know you you know mm. why are we thinking that you can just skip over all of that and go straight for the you juggernaut and like just like set up a call and let's let you know do business I'm like no yeah. <laughs> I don't know yeah. Who. yeah so anyway that was just a little I don't know who then, teaches but- those strategies but they need to stop stop they teaching stop. people that gives <laughs> marketing a bad name then really doesn't it no, but I don't even think that is marketing to me. That is like direct selling. It's like it is no different to knocking on somebody's door and just and and this is what I was, I was thinking. You know, should I say this to the person in response? I'm like, would you actually walk out down the street right now, find a house that you don't think is styled very well or done nicely, go up and knock on their door and start telling them what's wrong with their house? Like, no one in their right mind would do that. Why are you doing that in my inbox? Why are you yeah. saying, hey? Um, I think I can help you. I'm like, who says I need help? How <laughs> do you know anything? Yeah. Like, can you please, you know, have some sort of respect and just understand that what you're doing is not selling. It's it's almost the dead opposite. <laughs> it is yeah. making sure that yeah. no one is going to buy from you because we're highly <laughs> offended before you've even begun. <laughs> Yeah, and I get the ones um, on both Instagram and um, also in LinkedIn because I guess, you know, they have inboxes that you can read. Facebook is kind of a little bit more difficult to that sort of thing. And it's just like, you know, they send you thing, a, a thing saying, you know, if I could give you 100 quality leads a month, what could that do to your business? And I'm like, make me curl up and cry. Like, yeah. you don't know anything about my business. Like, I am the business. You give me a 100 people to service every single month, I'm in the corner crying and rocking. I, that's too many for me. So, again, it's just so untargeted and so, you know, throwing wow. spaghetti at the wall and seeing what sticks. You know, there'll be businesses out there be like, oh, yes, I'd like a 100 leads, but send it to them. You know, get to know yeah. your people. It's that old saying of, you know, it's you can't walk up to someone that you don't know and say, marry me. Like, yeah. You know, you've got to date them. You've got to woo mm. them. You've got to understand them. You've got to know who they are. Like, I don't like that analogy, but it works really well as a yeah. visual. People get it. It totally is. And it's like, this is the thing, because I have those ones as well. And, uh, you know, you think you're just saying, like, it's not about 
volume. And if you, I mean, look, it, it's not that it doesn't work. If you get, you know, 400 appointments a month, you might convert some of them. Yes. yes. But yeah. how much time are you going to spend on those calls with people who, you know, these appointment setters are out there annoying people, getting in their inbox, trying to get them to have a call with you. And then what an icky situation even to be in in the first place. Like they did not reach out of their own accord and say, I'm looking for something. I've found this person. I like their vibe. I'm going to do it. They've had someone, you know, jab them into getting on the call. I don't know what you call it, but it's like I, I just, the whole energy around that is terrible. Plus, yeah, yeah like you say, no, I don't want 40 or 100 um, appointments a week of people who are not, who have not actually chosen themselves to be there. They have been coerced into being there <laughs> or pushed or, you know, sold some slimy thing, or maybe they're just really desperate. I'm like, they're actually not who I'm wanting to talk to because. Possibly over promised something and then you're about to under deliver. Yeah, mm. Totally. And it's like, and then what are we doing? We're trying to convince somebody to buy from us. I'm like, that is not how my business works. Like anyone who gets on a sales call, they already know they want to work with me. It's more a matter of, okay, let's have a chat and actually confirm that she's real. <laughs> and that, you know, she's the same in real life as she is on, you know, and, and let's just figure out the nitty gritty. Like how does it work and how long is it? Like we're already at the actual point of signing up, yeah. which is why, you know, nine out of 10 or more of my sales calls end in a sale because I'm not having all of these ones with randoms who are never going to buy. And I don't want yeah, that. I don't so want that. true. Like, so true. Why mm. would I want to fill my day with that? And you I reply to them going, no, that would be the worst thing possible. <laughs> I do not want 40 appointments. <laughs> yeah. I should send them a message. Like should send them a photo of me looking terrified or something wrong, wrong inbox. People move on. <laughs> Uh, I was I um said I should send them a photo of me looking terrified and just leave the conversation at that really <laughs> <laughs> totally and I think this really for me is setting up this whole discussion today about thinking about marketing and why you would be investing any energy any budget any time into doing marketing it's so that you're not sitting on a hundred sales calls that are not mm. going to turn into clients wasting all that time and feeling like you're a total failure because you don't need to be doing that like imagine the difference when your marketing is actually working for you and it's delivering you real leads of people who already want to work with you and it's just a matter of how so Jen where what is it like we're talking about your budget where you should be spending your energy marketing dollars so aside from um you know, when people are like, right, okay, I'm going to invest in marketing. What is the biggest mistake that you can see people make straight away when they think, okay, I've got this money, I'm going to spend it on marketing. Uh, this is what I'm going to do. What are they, what are they doing? Um, how does that play out at the moment? Yeah, look, I, that's such a big question, isn't it? Like, it, oh, there's so many things I could answer that question with. But I suppose the first thing that I think that people make a mistake as is perhaps they do what's easy for them so they've got this budget so they think oh I'll do a Facebook ad or I'll do an Instagram <laughs> ad or I'll outsource yeah. it to a, you know an agency or something like that to do my ad for me so they take perhaps the simple route which I get because we're already really busy but I think that you know, all of that needs some thought. If you've got, and I love those questions that you have. I often see them in Facebook groups. It's like, if you had $10,000 in your business to spend on anything, what would you spend it on? And there's just hundreds, marketing, 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 marketing. It's like, what yeah. part of marketing <laughs> would you spend it on? Like, it, I feel like getting on there and going, what type of marketing? What type of marketing? What type of marketing? Because it's just, you know, there's so much to choose from. So I guess, you know, obviously you want to spend your marketing dollars where your people are hanging out. And I know that's a bit of a cop-out answer because, you know, we really do need to get our fundamentals right of, you know, who is our who, where do they hang out type of thing. Mm -hmm. And I think we've we really do have to like, rethink all of that. And I think if that's not an exercise your listeners done, 
in a while, I would highly recommend they go back and do it because we're changing. I'm changing as a consumer. I'm not the same consumer I was probably six months ago, definitely not mm-hmm. two years ago. So mm-hmm. our messaging has to change. And we can no longer just say, oh, our ideal client hangs out on Instagram. Like those days are gone as well. It's like, okay, do they do they look at stories? Do they do the feed? Mm-hmm. Are they addicted to reels? You know, Do they watch live video? We now have options within options so we need to sort of think about all of that as far as you know where we're going to spend our money so if you've got some money to spend in marketing you really do have to think about you know where does your ideal client hang out um you know at the moment I'm writing a a marketing book that's all about you know I don't know the actual title of the book yet, but it's something like 120 ways to market your business or something like that. So it's kind of like a tips book type of thing. And there's still some real value in doing TV ads and radio and newspaper and things that aren't digital if it's the right thing for your clients. And that's what I'm trying to get across Mm -hmm. in this book because these things aren't dead. They're just dead for a certain amount of the population. But there's Mm. a certain amount of the population that it still be really good for. Advertising on Spotify, advertising on people's podcasts that you know your ideal client listens to. There's all sorts of different ways that you can sort of advertise. Mm. But I think, or market your to your ideal audience, but I think the, the second biggest mistake I really see people make is they spend the money and they never spend the time going back and seeing whether it was successful. Mm. So I spent five yeah. grand on a Facebook ad. Great. I, I reached 20,000 people or I reached 100,000 people. It's like, that's fantastic. How much money mm. did you make out of it? What was your return on that investment? You know, was did you have a goal for a start, like setting that goal, I want 200 sales from this money or I want two sales from this money, whatever it looks like. And spending Mm -hmm. that time going back over the analytics, you know, deciding whether that campaign was a success or not. If not, what could you have done differently? If yes, what could you have done differently to make it even more successful? I think we are so busy in our businesses chasing the next thing we don't spend enough time I guess looking in that revision mirror and looking at the data which is why people like us we love digital marketing so much because there is so much data like we can make really strategic data-driven decisions in our business because oh no hello (laughs) So spending your time looking at your analytics, you know, there's a reason why I love digital marketing and I'm sure you do too, because we get so much data from it. We can make really strategic business decisions by looking back at the historical data to go what worked, what didn't work, what's next type of thing. So I think that's a really big mistake that people make is they've got the budget, they spend the budget, and then they look to the next thing and don't go back and have a look at that campaign or the success or the not success of whatever that they had spent their money on. Mm. Do you think as well, like in that where especially advertising, I think this is probably the easiest one to to sort of talk about because when people are thinking about dollars and spending, it's usually advertising is the first thing that anyone would yeah. think of. And, you know, something that I see quite often is people saying, oh, you know, yeah, I tried doing some ads, but they didn't work. And I'm like, well, what do you mean that they didn't work? What about it didn't work? And they're like, well, I spent this amount of money and I only made one sale. And I'd say, well, okay, first of all, like, let's, backtrack and actually understand what your ad strategy was um, and I think this is where and you might see this as well people putting money into an ad and expecting this one ad to do the entire job of marketing to take <laughs> and sales actually so it's like I'm going to reach a stranger they're going to see my one ad they're going to read it click on it decide to buy and buy now that can happen and I think certainly for products um, you know where that person Mm. already knows that they're looking for a product and it pops up in their feed they're like yes I'm looking for a new pair of shoes here are some shoes great I'm going to buy them that can happen um but where you're talking for most businesses and even for products that are new and that people haven't seen before it's never going to happen with one ad so the fact Mm -hmm. that you ran one ad and it (laughs) isn't successful um you know I think that we had really high expectations on what one ad was going to do and potentially weren't thinking about how you're using that ad in your marketing journey. Um, so, yeah. you know, like, do you see this as well with, you know, what they're spending their money on and then how they're looking at the, um, 
you know, what is it that we're actually saying was successful or not successful and how you're attributing that scent. Yeah, absolutely. That is a really good point. And I see it all the time. And in fact, just the other day I was on Instagram and there's this really, I won't name names, but there is this super cool ad. I freaking love this ad. It is so well produced. It is such a fantastic ad. It's yeah. selling uh, a program, like a business program or something like that. It's super engaging. And so I went through the click. So I clicked on it and then it's like, who who's behind? this ad so I clicked on their Instagram I'm like "Mm, okay and then in their bio they had some other sort of um another business that was basically that was the business behind the ad so you click through to the individual and then you click through to the business I clicked through to the business on Instagram they haven't posted since 2020 (laughs) and that was kind of like well, that funnel just fell off, didn't it? Like this oh, ad, like I was goodness. never going to be the buyer of the product. I was the person that was curious as a marketer because I just thought the ad was just so good. Um, but, of course, anyone who does their research, like 2020 is still a business, like what are you doing running ads? Like, it, it, again, it was a mm. really big disconnect, but maybe mm. not everyone will follow that. Maybe other people will just look at the ad, click through and, you know, join the program type of thing. I don't know. But anyone who does yeah. their due diligence just found that that ad just plummeted, like they were mm-hmm. on a, oh, a maybe, and then all of a sudden a huge nose. Like, why are you linking to Instagram if you're not posting since 2020? Like, don't even link to it. Um, you know, don't even give me that excuse to, you know, not want to buy. But yeah, and I think you, again, you know, those, those touch points, the funnel, where does it begin? Like, what part of the funnel is it in? Um, you know, is it a an ad targeting a cold audience or a warm audience or a hot audience? Like if it's you're targeting a hot audience, someone who already know, loves and trusts you, yeah can bring in sales quite quickly but if it's a cold audience like you're saying someone you've never heard of mm-hmm. you know a bit of due diligence needs to be done and then you yeah. find whether or not it's a good thing or a bad thing yeah absolutely and you know I think that ads can be an amazing amplifier of something mm. that's already working so it's like hey I've set something up I've got a a marketing you know there's something for them to engage in become a lead and you know and then we've got our sales process that happens well I want more people to become leads great so here's a reason where you're needing the volume and this is where ads can amplify that because you can put some money behind ads Mm -hmm. to help you to get more people to sign up to the lead but it's not doing the entire job of everything for you Um, I think is probably where a lot of people fall down or you know also um, budget wise so I'd not love to hear about how you tell people, especially with I'm going to put this budget into ads. So what are the, when they're thinking about the budget and how much to put in, um, you know, is this going to be a good decision? What are the metrics that we're looking for to know whether it's a success? Like how do you help people to determine how much they should spend, you know, or be looking at for their targets? Like what would their cost per lead be or cost per sale be? example yeah yeah I guess that all comes down to knowing your numbers you've got to you've got to be over your numbers as a small business owner you don't have to be the accountant you don't even have to be the bookkeeper but you have to know your numbers for sure you've got to know what how much it actually you know what's what's the average spend of your customers what's the average cost now to acquire a new customer how about mm-hmm. a customer who's already been a customer like what's the average as uh, you know spend that you have to acquire to get that person back again like you do have to know some really sort of simple metrics to know how much money you should be spending mm-hmm. on an ad i guess we've always historically been told that our marketing budget should be around 10 percent of our turnover So I would say there are a lot of small business owners out there who aren't putting 1% of their turnover into their marketing budget and probably in kind they are, as in they're probably not spending the money, but they're probably spending all the time doing the free marketing things such as, you know, I don't know, Go posting on Facebook and Instagram and doing TikTok videos and things like that. So there is a real cost to those because you are worth so much an hour and you're spending the time creating that content mm. type of thing. But as far as like actually paying for some marketing, um, yeah, I'd say that uh, there's a lot of small business owners who haven't 
taken that leap to invest um, because they're probably not sure how to where to spend it, how to spend it, or what the return should be. So you really do have to sort of sit down and think about those goals. I think if you're in e-commerce, it becomes a little bit easier because you know what the profit is. You know how many products you've got. You know the average spend of most of your customers. Like the data, Mm -hmm. if you've got a good e-commerce business, the data is pretty easy to draw out in that way Um, but service-based businesses I think it gets a little bit more complicated and I'm not sure that that I'm not sure there's an ad that you could run that will create all the sales if there's no other marketing that exists around Mm -hmm. that same messaging um, as a service-based person maybe you know end of financial year get your tax done for 50 bucks might work Um, you (laughs) might earn any money out of it but you know you might get leads through the door like Mm. there is people who are willing to um, discount in price and make things, you know, at, at price competitive, uh, you know, go into the competition of being on price, then, yeah, that ad always will work to a certain demographic. But is that the people you really want to attract, yeah. I guess? Yeah, that's a, a really good point as well. And it, I think, you know, say that you do want to run an ad for your tax return um service which is is probably fairly commoditized like in terms of even though it's a service it is quite it can operate a little bit like a product in that way so here's where you know well i know what the service is worth so that's what a sale is worth is 50 dollars per client so how much am i willing to spend on the ad in order to to get that client Mm -hmm. and this is where i think you know that people often crowdsource like oh how much should a lead be worth or how much should um, I be spending on the ads and it's like well it depends doesn't it on what the outcome is for you if you're selling a $50 service or if you're selling a $5,000 service well you're going to have a very different appetite for how much you're willing to pay per lead um, and mm. that also depends on your conversion rate as well from that lead to the sale doesn't it so yeah. it's kind of it's not complicated numbers, but it's like it just takes that little bit of thought because, you know, the the ad isn't an expense as such. It's actually in this case, if we talk about your tax person, like you might spend $5 to get that lead and it's bringing you $50. Therefore, you haven't spent $5, you've gained $45. Yes. Like, yeah. Because if you didn't spend that $5, then you wouldn't have that client. So, you know, yeah. I think people often think about it in the backwards way of like, oh, but it's costing me $5. It's like, no, are you actually, you're gaining $45. Like, do you want the client or don't you want the client? Yeah. And that's where, you know, you can kind of really look from that more numbers perspective as to what is the value of doing this? Is this worthwhile for my business or not? If that yeah, leads was forty dollars, maybe not because you're only getting ten dollars back, right? <laughs> yeah, or, or maybe, maybe depending on your business. Like you know, again, you look at the lifetime value of your client. Like you know, lost leaders have been done in business for years, and they work really mm. successfully. If you if you know, okay, I'm going to lose money on the first sale, but I know the lifetime value of my client once I get them in my world is ten thousand dollars or five thousand dollars over their lifetime. Whether you call that a lifetime of a human or five years or three years or 12 months, whatever it is, like that could be a valuable loss. You could be like, okay, you know, I'm prepared to lose money here because I know my funnels or my offerings that, you know, Mm. they'll start off small, but 80% of people then buy this program or then buy that product. So it is like, it's almost like a journey of your numbers. You've kind of got to, you know, understand the journey of your numbers to know, you know, what to spend on your marketing. And I know that sounds really complicated because you're like, I just want to do an ad, Jen, come on. Um, (laughs) And and, and therefore that's where, you know, the beauty Mm -hmm. of marketing is test and measure. Like, you know, Mm -hmm. do it, do an ad, do it and just test it. Don't put $10,000 into it, but, you know, put what you can afford and maybe, you know, test the waters and see how it goes. Go back, look at the data. Mm, That really worked or that, oh, that really didn't work. Um, You know, as far as the social media ad or something like that goes I always recommend people run three you know for a start and just see because human behavior is so hard to know are they going to watch a video are they more likely to click a funny photo are they more likely to click you know a lot of words you know whatever that we don't know depends on how they're feeling on the day so if you kind of set up three different creative ads and then you let the people 
tell you which one's going to work properly and then you switch the other two off I think you know that's a really good way of like I know that doesn't work with all sorts of ads but it does can work definitely with digital ads that's the thing is it's often you're not going to know what's working for your business until you've done it and tested and tried it you can get all of the advice um, you can go around in circles but at the end of the day you are going to have to run some experiments and kind of feel like hey this is okay it's an experiment um, and also to sort of know what those numbers are that you're targeting. Like what should your cost per click be? What should your cost per lead be? Well, you'll be able to figure that out once you backtrack from the outcome that you that you want and what your conversion rates are at each point in that journey. So um, it doesn't have to be complicated though, does it? Now, we're talking advertising here, Jen, but I know, Mark, and you and I both know there's so much more in marketing. It's not about advertising is not marketing. It is one one tiny element that you can use. So what do you think in terms of someone who's sitting here listening, thinking, okay, right, so 10% of my turnover, I should be kind of allocating towards marketing to help me grow the business, to help me bring in clients, um, you know, consistently, whatever that goal is for them. What? should they be thinking on in terms of well, where could I spend that budget um, what sort of things would actually be beneficial to putting that energy and money into yeah look I, I think um, it depends a lot on what business you have like a service-based business would be a very different answer to an e-commerce business for instance um, and I, I, I'm going to really cop out again and say, go back to the marketing basics of knowing your ideal client and knowing your audience um you know like if i think of e-commerce uh you know if you're not doing google shopping ads with e-commerce then you're leaving money on the table you know if you're not doing really good funnels in your emails you know whether you're service-based or retail-based and your demographic of person you know is more likely to open emails than what they are to be on social media then you're leaving money on the table type of thing so you've really got to kind of know that person to know where it is that you should be spending your marketing budget Uh, if you're extremely time poor then maybe your marketing budget is spent on somebody helping you with your marketing maybe if you're just starting out then part of your marketing budget should be doing you know a mastermind program and surrounding yourself with people who are you know I guess a few levels above you to kind of you know show you I guess how to build a profitable business or you know surrounding yourself with like-minded people to sort of grow that and you know and calling that part of your marketing budget by you know I guess you know working with other people who are really good at marketing and learning from them Um, maybe your marketing budget should be spent going to some really good talks like there's some amazing people who put on workshops and put on keynotes that can really inspire you and help you think outside the marketing box maybe it's book you need to buy and um you know I guess invest time you know sitting out in the sunshine if you can find it in the middle of winter uh, and reading that book and extending your knowledge about what it is to run a business um I think there's so many areas you could be thinking about your marketing and, and where to spend that budget and it's just not on a Facebook ad or a Google ad or some sort of advertising it can be in so many other places as well that's so true. And I, I love that you've kind of got these three categories of, you know, how you could think about your marketing budget being split up. Um, you know, are you investing in your own development and knowledge um, and learning? Because honestly, like, I'm not sure how many years it's been for you, but 25 years for me at the moment since I started my first marketing job. And I'm wow. still learning. I'm still learning. Yeah. You know, it's like you do not ever stop learning because this world we're living in, like you just mentioned before, Jen, it's changed. We change all the time. And the funny thing is I I think people kind of click and realize after a while is like marketing's not like, you know, sticking a logo on something or running an ad. It's actually psychology that you are reaching out and you're engaging with people and connecting with them and how that works and what happens actually changes over time as we all evolve. And we've become Mm. very savvy online, even, you know, just, in the last few years you can see again the the change in people's behavior and what we're doing um Mm. i love that you know just increasing your knowledge um on you know how things work and and you know getting that insight that's so powerful that you can bring into it investing in support like you said you know 
Maybe it's someone to support you and take some of that time away from you, even if it's someone to do the graphics um, or yes. schedule some socials or, you know, actually just help you with some of the, the minor pieces. Or, you know, you can, of course, hand the whole thing over. Um, and depending on what your business is, that may or may not be a good idea. Um, I always say that nobody knows your business mm. or your client better than you do. And so, you know, I certainly have people who support me in, in specific roles, but I am very much always the person who's leading the messaging and leading what it is that we're doing as a business because it's my business. I know it and breathe it more so than anyone else. Um, and then, you know, you're like you said, the implementation. So that might be running ads. And um, I loved how you said, you know, Google Shopping, it's a no brainer. And it's like that, you know, even with a service based business, like, well, aside from doing ads, you know, you might even do something like investing in putting yourself into a relevant um, online directory or something where, you know, people are going to come to and search for businesses like yours. Um, and it just creates that online footprint, doesn't it? Where you think, well, this is, you know, helping to put my business in the right places so people can find me, you know, whether if they're on Google, well, what are they going to find? Um, and if you if you show up in more spots, then you have more chance of being noticed. Um, yeah. You might do something like we're doing now. Like you might go, hey, I'm going to invest in a podcast. Um, yeah. And actually all I've got to do is show up and talk and I could invest in having someone else do all of the production pieces for me. Um, <laughs> so, you know, the, the options are endless. Thank you for yeah. sharing those. So when we have, I guess, that, budget we've got the money that we're obviously spending and the energy to it you did mention before it's really important to be looking at the numbers and to be assessing what you're doing I think this is where some people you know probably become unstuck because I see lots of people getting really enthusiastic about spending and then you know maybe the result doesn't get to the point that they wanted. And so then they're like, that's ah, it, I'm never doing ads again because I've run one Facebook ad <laughs> and it was a disaster. <laughs> How should, you know, if you had some advice for someone who's, you know, new to allocating budget and, and to, under, you know, looking at their numbers, you know, what's that kind of time frame that you'd like them to look at running an activity for before they decide whether it's working or not? Look, it depends on what what we're running but let's say for instance keeping it simple we're running um a, a facebook ad for instance you know how long do we run that before we decide whether it's successful or not um i would say about four days you'll you'll have a three or four days you'll have a really good indication of whether or not it's actually reaching the people that you've asked it to reach um and that's why i sort of suggest you know if you run three uh, you know, at a time and then you'll find one will always do better than the other. And then that's the one that you put all your budget into. And, and you've got to continue to watch it. It's not a set and forget thing, most certainly. Yeah. Um, but I think especially with digital ads um, and if I can say, especially Facebook and Instagram ads, you've really got to think about them like a I don't know, I always say a six-year-old child, but I'm not sure a six-year-old child does what they're told either. So I need to find a different analogy. <laughs> it's kind of like you need to think of these things as little kids. Um, you were saying before that people might run ads. So I, I guess it's always really good to run, you know, three or so ads together because then you do get to see which one is performing the best. And, and, and the humans that you've targeted have actually told you which one is working the best. So that's always a great idea. But if we take the example of a Facebook ad, I guess, if I can just dig a little bit deeper into that particular type of ad. Um, you really, like you were saying before about how people say, I ran an ad and it didn't work. And I find that when I go back and analyze that for people, it did work. It did exactly what you asked it to do. You just didn't ask it to do the right thing. So yeah. people will, um, you know, want people to go and buy a, a product or a service on their website. And so they go to Facebook, they set up an ad that's a traffic ad. Uh, they put their budget into the traffic ad. And then, you know, the traffic ad at the end of it said it reached 10,000 people, but you didn't make a sale. And it's just like, well, the ad didn't work. I'm like, the ad worked. The ad did exactly what you said. You wanted them to find people that were most likely to click a link to go to a website. And it found 10,000 of those. The problem happened when it got to the sales page and that 
you know, people bounced off that or that didn't make sense to people. Mm. It wasn't the right people to go to that sales page. So the ad worked, You, the process just wasn't right for them. You know, the thinking through, you know, the buyer's journey didn't work. And I think that that's where a lot of people slip up is they think the ad didn't work, but especially with Facebook ads, it does exactly what you tell it to do. You want yeah. more people to watch videos, it goes and finds more people who are most likely to watch a video, um, you know, within the demographic. Yeah that you choose um, you know engagement it finds more people who are most likely to click like or leave a comment like <laughs> so you know you've got to find that process and you've got to have a look at the buyer's journey all the way through to call the ad a success it's just not what you know facebook or meta can do for yeah. you uh, exactly. And this is, um, you know, I love getting into it and I know that it might get too detailed for this episode. So we'd have to part this conversation for another day. But, you know, with that traffic, it's like, hey, if you've now sent 10,000 people to your site and they didn't buy, um, that may be because they weren't the type of person who instantly buys off an ad um, and you didn't ask Facebook to find those because you didn't run the conversions yes. ad. Um, yes. <laughs> however, now you've got these people who've been to your website. So if you have your pixels set up and you have audiences for Google or something else, you can be still serving those people other ads. Um, you know, you follow them around the internet if you're running Google ads and bring them by. And this is where it's like you said, it's sort of understanding the buyer's journey. And, you know, we mentioned earlier on, like an, one ad is not going to do the whole thing in one go. Like one ad can't generally, I know there's always an exception, but generally it does not do <laughs> initial touch point to sale in one ad. Like that just does not happen. Um, so you want to think about, well, where is this ad in the journey? And then what happens next? So I got them to the site. They had a look in the browse. They're not ready to buy. Well, what am I? do next now I've actually got that you know we've got that data we might have it in Facebook pixels with an audience of people who visited your website or even a specific page on your site that you can retarget or you've got the Google um, you know if you've got Google ad tracking set up on your site then you could also like you said run some Google ads which would get them in other places it's not just on Facebook so yeah what an yeah. awesome way to think about it yeah yeah there's all sorts of different things and yes it comes down to data again you look at the data and you know what happened so good thank you for sharing so much about the the budgeting and what we can do with our marketing dollars in this episode and you know i really love how it's, it's just about making it simple i think at mm -hmm. times you know it can feel complicated especially we've just started talking about motions and retargeting and things and it sounds complicated to begin with but when we sit down and actually look at what a person's process is that they go through it then can feel really easy and you don't have to do it all at once you can kind of go use ads at one part of this journey um and, yeah. and keep it super simple do you have any final kind of comment or takeaway about the budget that you'd like to leave our listeners with today? Yeah, look, I, I guess my my final thing is just to encourage you to spend some money on marketing. I think there are so many free options out there. One thing to remember, if it's free, you are the product. So be very aware that you are the product they are. The platform is then marketing to because you haven't paid for that platform. But I think that yeah don't hesitate in investing in marketing i think people are you know use mailchimp because it's for free or will use facebook and instagram because it's for free but actually spending some money on your marketing can actually really help um, propel your business forward a lot quicker mm -hmm. um and and i i really love the comment that you know you enhanced before about investing in yourself if you've listened to this podcast and you're like i have no idea about retargeting or google ads then that's a really good little nudge for you to go maybe i should invest in that maybe i should invest maybe some money doing a course or invest some time in watching some youtube videos like you know there's people out there that can help you with that but you know, maybe that's your nudge to sort of invest a little bit more in your own learning mm. so that you can learn these things and I would always encourage people to learn things before they outsource them people who outsource things they have no idea about mm -hmm. that's how people get ripped off that's yeah. how people you know you spend lots of money and don't really understand what they're getting for that return whereas mm. if you learn it and you can talk that language and you can ask quality questions then you're more likely to see the result that you want 
Mm, that's so wise. Um, definitely do not just ever throw money at a problem that you're not willing <laughs> to understand. Um, yeah. It is worth, as Jen said, and, you know, I, I think we all speak from experience of having mm-hmm. done that in the past <laughs> ourselves. Um, you know, if you're outsourcing something because you don't know it, um, how do you even know what you should be looking for from that person? How do you even know yeah. what questions to ask or how to do that? You're really actually giving your business over to somebody yeah. else to run and, you, and you're not in the driver's seat anymore if you don't mm-hmm. have some knowledge. You don't need to be the expert and that's probably why you hire the expert. You don't need to yes. get that level of expertise, but you do need to have at least an understanding of what it is that this is about and what you're doing. So I love yeah. that you've mentioned that, Jen. Thank you, because <laughs> it's so important. And I know, you know, it really hurts me when I see people saying, oh, I've wasted, you know, I spent five grand on Facebook advertising and it didn't work. And I'm like, you've gone into it completely blind. You didn't stop and pause for a moment just to understand how it works. And like you said, Facebook actually is so smart. It does exactly what you tell it. So, you know, if you're telling, giving it the wrong instructions, just like chat GPT, if you tell it the yes. wrong instructions, it's giving you back garbage. Like Facebook yeah. is exactly the same. It's very intelligent. And um, it even tells you now that it's still learning. So, you know, mm. a lot of the time, I think someone dabbles in it. They might put $2 a day or something on an ad to go, well, I'll see if this works. It's like, well, that's not giving Facebook very much chance to give you the results because it's going to take forever for it to reach enough people to actually learn what's working and what isn't. So if you really want that four-day turnaround of like, hey, my ad's working in four days, you've got to put the budget behind it. You've got to go, look, I'm prepared to put in this amount per day. Um, yeah. And yes, I'm not going to continue necessarily to run all those ads. I'll switch two of them off and just run one. But you need to give it enough data to actually give you the result of something that that I definitely found as well. So it's important yeah. to invest up front. <laughs> yeah, 100%. Yes, yes, very much so. So, Jen, if anybody's wanting to um, reach out and learn some more from you, um, Jen also has her own amazing podcast that's full of marketing advice. Um, and you can, you know, listen into some of Jen's episodes as well. But where's the best place for them to to reach you and um, connect? Yeah, thank you. Um, so yes, my podcast is Small Business Made Simple. So come over there and have a bit of a listen to that. Um, otherwise, my website is socialmediaandmarketing.com.au or I hang out on socials at Jen Donovan in most of them. I must say my favourite place to hang out is LinkedIn. So if you're on LinkedIn, connect with me there. But I am on Instagram and Facebook um, because that's where my audience is and I have to, but I do like hanging out on LinkedIn. I find it a really nice place. So come and connect with me there. But yeah, thank you so much for this chat. It's been a great chat. I haven't talked about this sort of thing in a little while. So thank you yeah, for allowing me and, and hearing from you as well. It's been a really good marketer to marketer chat as well. Absolutely. I think I love always <laughs> love chatting with you, Jen. I'm like, you know, anyone who's watching on the um, video version of this um, see that we've both been grinning away this whole episode. Um, we always have so much to talk about. It feels like we're always kind of, oh, better not go off down that tangent because we might get stuck up there for a while. <laughs> Who knows where that might lead? There'll be hidden passages up there as well. Isn't there? Yes, yeah, but exactly. Thank you for sharing. Yeah, so much of your expertise and, and advice. And, um, you know, I think that you've raised some really awesome you know, points to have a think about you know things like the tv and radio are not dead they're absolutely mm-hmm. not you know there's we've only added more and more and more ways that you can reach your audiences um as technology evolves um the old ones haven't gone away they're actually still no. there and uh yeah it's amazing isn't it it's just yeah. understanding what works like you said so many times it's really like you've got to get really clear on your business your ideal client what's actually going to work for you and your type of business and the type of, you know, the type of transaction that you're doing as well. Like what do they need from that? Um, because the ads or how you spend your marketing um, plays a really good role in that, but it doesn't do the whole job for you. Yeah, yeah. exactly, exactly. Amazing. Well, thank you, Jen. Um, lovely thank to you. chat as always. And no doubt we'll talk to you soon. Yeah, thank you. Thank you.